to another episode of Tuesday's Tech Talk. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about cabinet resonances. Uh, it's a subject that's uh, been out there in discussions a lot lately. Uh, what is cabinet resonance, first of all? Um, cabinet resonance is when your woofer, your mid-base driver, exerts pressure in the box and it excites the sidewalls of the box. Those sidewalls will flex, they'll resonate, uh, sometimes they're out of phase from what the woofer's doing. In other words, woofer's out, sidewalls pull in, woofer moves in, sidewalls pull out. It some, can somewhat nullify the outputs, but normally it creates an output that's in addition to the woofer's output. In other words, it's adding output. It's adding a little bit of buzz, a little bit of bloom, if you will, to uh, the music. Uh, some speaker companies do it on purpose. They want to add a little resonance there, a little body, uh, by adding those cabinet resonances and giving the singer a little more bloominess to his voice. Um, it's coloration, obviously. It's not part of the input signal. Uh, those of us that are more purist, we do everything we can to keep that out of the input or out of the uh, out of the output of the speaker. We just want to hear the input only. Uh, anything addition is just coloration. You don't want your speaker to become an instrument. You want it to faithfully reproduce the instruments that it's playing. Um, and another way we see that resonance is we'll, we'll see it in a uh, impedance sweep. For an impedance sweep you start seeing little bumps and, and little peaks in there uh, that aren't supposed to be there. That's indicative of a cabinet resonance. That means that resonance is, is now being picked up by the woofer. It's, in other words, the woofer's playing, it's exciting the box, the box is buzzing, and then that resonance of the box is then being picked back up by the woofer. That's what we're seeing in the uh, impedance sweeps. Uh, when you see that, it's usually pretty significant resonance. Uh, you can then use an accelerometer to place on the speaker in different locations, and you can kind of help find it or see where it is, but um, that doesn't get rid of it. So we're going to talk a little bit about ways to control it, ways to get rid of it. All right, how can you then control cabinet wall resonances? Um, one of the ways is to add a damper or something to the wall. Um, there's products out there that are for that. We used to carry a product called Black Hole 5. Great name, loved it, Black Hole. Um, the 5 meant 5 layers. It had a 40 mil damper. It had a foam layer and then it had a suspended barrier layer, a thicker foam layer, and then a vinyl layer on top of that. It was actually a product that was designed for soundproofing. It's designed for heavy machinery and things to where you're trying to keep sound from going from one side of the wall to the other side of the wall. So the suspended barrier layer helps do that uh, pretty effectively. Uh, as pressure reaches the suspended barrier layer, it will then move and convert some of that energy into heat. Technically, it's converting it into heat. There's really not much heat going on there, but that's what it's doing. It's moving and it's absorbing that pressure and not letting it hit the exterior wall. And then the exterior wall has a damper on it that helps control the resonance of the panel. So it's pretty effective as, as far as controlling panel resonances. The problem that we found with Black Hole 5 is that the suspended barrier layers tend to mass load the driver. In other words, you're putting pressure in the box and those barrier layers are moving, and then those barrier layers are then affecting the sound of the mid-range or affecting the sound of the woofer. And if you listen to it with it or without it, you can clearly hear a muddiness. There's a, right in the lower vocals, it just seems to smear uh, and just kind of mud that over. And uh, there's another product out there for that it was designed for the same application for soundproofing and it's sold commonly uh, for loudspeaker applications i think it's called sonic barrier or something and it's just a foam layer and another barrier and then another foam layer and it's great for keeping sound from passing from one side of something to another side of something but it has no damper uh, to control cabinet wall resonances and it still mass loads your driver and muddies up your mid-range. So we don't recommend going that route. 
um, that can take the sound of it further south. You still have the resonance and you've also muddied up your mid-range. Um, so at one point I spent a lot of time in research and development developing a product that would control uh, the resonances of the panels uh, more effectively. Uh, I know I didn't want to make this into a, I'm going to sell you a product um, uh, infomercial or something. I'm trying to keep this as tech talk as possible and just talk to you about technical aspects. But when we get into cabinet wall resonances, I can't really talk a lot about cabinet wall resonances without giving you a solution. So here's a solution. Um, this is a sheet of a product that we call NoRes. And NoRes was developed uh, just to control cabinet wall resonances and speakers. Uh, the way it's made, it's got a 70 mil damper, which is a much heavier and denser damper than what uh, came in Black 05. And then it just has a foam layer. Uh, it's got a pressure sensitive adhesive, so you just peel and stick. Um, you can run it through a table saw and cut it like butter. You can cut it with a box cut knife, score it, cut it into little pieces. Once you've cut it into little pieces, you can slide it through your woofer hole, reach around, stick it all into the, in the walls in a bunch of different pieces. Doesn't matter how many pieces you cut it into, just stack that stuff in there and uh, it'll control the resonances really effectively. And uh, it's, it's easy to apply. It's $42.95 a sheet. We keep tons of it in stock. We ship lots of it. It makes it easy. If you want to go the DIY route, uh, go to uh, one of your hardware stores and get heavy industrial floor tiles. And with those heavy industrial floor tiles, you can cut those up and glue those to the sides of, insides of the speaker. Uh, typically, you'll want to use contact cement. So you'll want to coat the inside of the speaker with contact cement, coat the uh, the vinyl barrier or the vinyl uh, floor tile and uh, and then press that in there. Uh, yeah, contact cement smells awful. You Be sure you do that outside. They make an odorless one. It still smells pretty awful. Um, but that's one way to do it. It's inexpensive. It's a lot more work. Um, it's not as effective as no res, but it is very effective. A lot more effective than putting a sonic barrier in your speaker and without the negative side effects. Then you can go in and glue in a layer of foam. And uh, I know fo foam is the expensive part. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the, the price of Black 05 or no res is where it is because it just costs a lot to have that stuff made. Um, but you can glue in a foam layer uh, on top of it. You can add fiberglass insulation or polyfill, whatever you want to do. Uh, that's a DIY route you can go. Uh, to get probably 70 or 80 percent of where you'd get if you went straight to no res. Um, so there is, there is choices out there. Um, and there's some of us who, um, like myself, I'm used to listening to open baffle speakers, like the one behind me here, the Inexotica that we offer, is a full open baffle speaker. Uh, you can see it on our website if you want to know about it. Uh, when you're used to listening to speakers that are full open baffle, you're not used to hearing any cabinet resonances at all, uh, pretty much none. So when you then hear a box speaker and there's cabinet resonance, it shows up really quickly. It's like you recognize immediately, that's not part of the input. That's not in the music. That is artificial. That is uh, coloration and you can't unhear it. Uh, when you hear it, it's like somebody shining a flashlight in your eyes and it's there on every note. So if you're used to it and you have a speaker that has that, you may not realize it's there. Usually you don't realize something like that is there and at that magnitude until you take it away and then you realize, wow, that was um, that's very significant. So it can be a pretty inexpensive upgrade when you upgrade your speaker by doing away with those cabinet resonances. A sheet of no res at 4295 plus some shipping is an, actually a very inexpensive tweak and uh, will improve your presentation considerably. So keep stuff like that in mind. Um, if you have further questions about resonances or how to control them, drop it in the comments section. I look forward to hearing your comments. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody that's following along, and we'll see you again next week. Have a good one.